So we're gonna be using um, the modeling paste today. Um, today I'm gonna to be using the Saracino. You don't have to use this one, you can use a different one. It's just this one's got cocoa butter in, so it gives me a while to work with it without it drying and cracking. Um, you can get it small packs, you can get it big packs, you can get it even bigger packs than this, so it really is up to you. So this morning when I was first mixing colors, um, because as you all know, I don't really like to start mixing food colors in. Um, I just mixed the green and the white together, but actually it was a little bit dark. So in the end, um, I ended up with about this color and I used the peppermint. So this is what I actually used for the color that we're gonna use today. So just mixed in with the white serotina. I did actually pick up the eucalyptus one cause I thought that one might be okay to use as well, um, but it's a much darker color. So if you decide on that one instead of peppermint, just put a very tiny amount in, whereas the peppermint won't go any darker than it looks in the pot, so you can get away with putting quite a lot of that one in, okay? Right, anything that I've forgotten to tell you all? No, I don't think so. Okay, we'll begin. So this one we decided on, or I decided on, because I thought it hopefully wouldn't be too difficult to make, so it wouldn't take me hours and hours to do it. Um, also, we've been watching The Mandarin, no, the Mandalorian, not the Mandarin, that's an orange. <laughs> you can tell I know a lot about Star Wars. <laughs> You've been enjoying it, huh? I've been enjoying it, and it's got the Baby Yoda in. Um, I, a lot of you guys have actually been asking me for a while to do Baby Yoda, and I've just never really had enough time. Uh, my original plan was to do one in cake, but I thought oh, for the Facebook Live today, I will do a little topper version. So I'm just kneading my modeling paste. Like I say, pre-dyed it earlier in the peppermint, Okay, and I'm actually just going to use the little sugar pearls again today for eyes. You can get them in all different sizes. So this one is just slightly bigger than these. These ones would probably be all right, actually, the large PME sugar ones. I've actually used, I'm going to use these ones, the 10 mil ones. These ones are full of chocolate in the middle, actually. Um, but I don't want to do a massive head if I'm using those. Otherwise, the eyes would be too small. So I've got my weighing scales for you guys today. Let's see, I think I want to use about 30, 35 grams of this. 32, put a tiny bit more in. There we go, close enough, close enough to 35. People from all over the world again, we've got, can see Kenya. Oh India, wow, hi South everyone. Africa, so yeah. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world, especially because I know it's completely different times everywhere else, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to give this bit. Doing it a bit, bit later makes it easier. For I don't know. I know a couple of people have mentioned me doing it a little bit later. Would you all prefer it a little bit later in the day for me to do this? You can answer in the comments. Yeah, just, just obviously answer in the... Well, they're not going to answer out loud. Okay, so, so I'm going to take about 35 grams and I'm going to roll it into... A ball okay so it shouldn't get too sticky unless my hands start getting warm my hands are actually freezing it is cold in here again and I'm afraid I didn't iron my shirt for you again today guys sorry I don't think I'm in shot actually my shirt so it's not too bad okay if it does get sticky just put a little bit of corn flour on your hands if you've got warm hands it, it might get a little bit stickier so we're gonna start with the ball I'm just gonna move these guys to one side otherwise I'm gonna end up catching them when I'm working I'm gonna, can you see it's, I've got paste stuck to me from the earlier ones. I haven't had a chance to get away from the chair to go wash my hands yet, just from that. Do you wanna just warn people that we might have internet problems because the Virgin's been a bit... Oh, well we have internet problems. I don't know, just if anybody can hear me, if we have any internet problems, uh, Virgin's been having a few problems yesterday, and I don't know if they're gonna carry on today, but just so if we do lose signal or it's a bit patchy, we apologize. Yeah, it's probably our internet. Right, okay, I've just put a tiny bit of corn flour on my hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it between my hands so that my hands are kind of like that. So I'm just catching one side of the ball. Okay. And if you don't want to do it as one piece, you can put the ears on separate, but I'm going to make it so the ears are part of the same thing. So it's a um, point on one end, and then I'm going to try and roll a point on the other. This is like the tricky bit, really, is the rolling the points on either end. So... If you need to, you can pick it up and do it this way. It's just to get more fingerprints in it if I do it that way. Okay. I don't want to do it too long and thin though, otherwise we won't end up with any bulk 
in the middle for the head. Just smooth this off a little bit more. Okay, it's kind of like a green lemon-ish, fairly pointy lemon. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put my fingers in either side of kind of what will be the face. And I'm gonna pinch, kind of pressing, can you see the top of my thumb up like that? So we're kind of making this bit here on the ear. I don't know if you guys can, can you see that Richard in the thing? So yeah, this yeah. bit of the ear, okay. Don't worry about if there's a load extra kind of at the bottom, that's fine. So it's kind of leaving it thicker here and nice and thin at the bottom bit, okay? They end up slightly different. Every time I make them, they end up a little bit different. These were my first ones that I ever made this morning, so <laughs> it's my excuse for not having much. One ear looks bigger than I haven't finished yet, whoa. God, he jumps ahead. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut can you see this bottom bit off here? Because that's the shape I want across the bottom of my ear and it brings it to more of a point. So then when I do the same on the other one, I can amend the size of that ear a little bit. Because Richard was obviously very keen on me doing that. Even though I was gonna be doing that bit next. Okay, so there we've got our kind of ears. If you want them bigger, just stretch them out a little bit more. That's fine. And it's up to you whether you want them kind of downwards or upwards a little bit at the end. I think they're fairly straight out, are they, generally? Or maybe if we bring them downwards, it would make him look a little bit sadder. If they're down, they're sad. If they're up, he's happy or cheeky. Yeah, I'm gonna pull so them quite, downwards. It's quite, a, it's quite a cheeky little tap in the, um, the, in the program. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a tool. I'm, to be honest, I'm using the handle of the tool, so anything that's a bit rounded at the moment. And I'm just gonna go, can you see just above the ear a little bit here and here? So I'm kind of marking where the edge of the face is gonna be. I'm just smoothing that back off. I feel like he's got a smaller face in this one than the other ones. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same at the bottom as well. So I'm getting a little dip there and there. Somebody's asked, do we use GoPros for our filming? We don't, do we? No, You've got one, actually. I do actually have a GoPro, but no, we just use um, iPhones at the moment for everything that we're doing. We do for the Facebook Lives, we oh, don't yeah. for our YouTube videos. For our YouTube videos, we use just Pop the normal phones. camcorders. Yeah, yeah. They're not like expensive ones or anything like that that we have, but we do We do have camcorders for the other videos, just because the quality on the phones isn't quite as good when we're doing the YouTube ones. Um, I'm just gonna press a little bit deeper in here. I'm just gonna use like the end of this rubbery ended tool. I'll get Emily to put links up to what it is I'm using. If you don't have this tool, it's not the end of the world. You can use something else that's a bit rounded. You'll probably find you've got bits and pieces in the kitchen cupboard that you can use instead of all these tools. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, about halfway, I'm gonna press in a little bit here for where I want his eyes to go. Can you guys see that properly? I wanted to try and leave his cheeks fairly chubby, but sometimes I end up catching them a little bit with my finger and they end up not quite as bulky. If I press, can you see this in more? It brings, you can see from the side, this out, so it brings the cheeks out just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm just gonna put my fingers in here and here. If I want him to look sad, I usually bring this down. In fact, I'll put the eyes in first and then I'll do that. So. Pick out two of the chocolate pearls. Oh wait, put some out here. Sometimes they're, um, like you can, you don't have to use these. Sometimes they're a bit misshapen. I still will use these, but I'll put them in downwards so that you don't see the odd shape. Or you eat them. Or I eat them, yeah. I've been good, I've not eaten any sweets yet this morning. What did you eat yesterday whilst we're in there? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, I can't remember. Is that a chocolate Easter egg? Oh yeah, <laughs> a chocolate rabbit that we found upstairs. Okay, so, I like chocolate. Um, look, you completely put me off track with what I'm doing. I'm just gonna actually bring out his nose a tiny bit more first before I, um, on mouth area, before I put the eyes in. So his kind of mouth area sticks out a little bit. So I'm using this and I'm kind of rolling it a little bit. Although it is gonna flatten my cheeks just a tiny bit. So I have to be a little bit careful with that. Also, I should have probably cut my fingernails down. I, I caught one of them in his chin with my fingernail earlier. Okay, so we're gonna pop these in place here and here. Don't put them too close together, leave a bit of a, gap can you see there in the middle and I'm just going to push I'm going to push them in fairly deep it'll flatten the head a bit at the back 
I think one eye might be slightly bigger than the other, but that's fine. And then I'm going to squeeze, can you see my face together a little bit? So they're slightly less rounded. So I can push up a little bit from the bottom of the face or I can push them down here. So usually, you know, if I'm pressing here and here, it starts just changing the shape of the eye a little bit. Or I can use this. Can you see if I roll it upwards there? It makes him look like he's just kind of lifting that inside corner of his brow a little bit. Just sometimes I press too hard on one and it, the paste comes further down over one eye than the other, which I don't want. There we go. So can you see if I push down now, can you see how it's changing the eyes and making them just look that little bit sadder? I'm going to squeeze his face, narrowing those, those little balls. And then what we're going to do is, can you see from either side of what will be kind of the mouth area, I'm going to press, can you see kind of downwards? And just rubbing it over it with my finger. Just bear me one second because we seem to have got a delay. There's There's always a delay, I think. Right, it's, um, you're on that camera now because this one seems to have stopped. Oh, the camera stopped. Yeah. Is the internet still working now? I'm just yeah, going to neaten up. Wait one second, completely pause on the TV. Okay. It's not like the streaming, so just hold on for four minute. Just gonna hold on a minute, guys, in case there's any problems with the with the videoing. Has it only just stopped or? Yeah. Is this live recording yeah, stop? I know it's back to live now. Okay. Why do we have so many problems with it? Because we're uh... <laughs> I don't know. Right guys, I don't know if you just saw what I did or not actually. Did it drop off a while ago or did yeah, they see? I think it did. At what point was I at? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, if you missed it, we pushed the eyes in. I think we got that bit. I did do it, and I'm going to press. Can you see either side of what will become the mouth area? So kind of here and here. And just rounding it off a little bit with my fingers so it makes this area stick out. And then I kind of squeezed his head down a little bit. And we went in a little bit here and here with this tool. Oops. Sometimes you get a little crease. We'll just see if I can nudge that back up there just a tiny bit. No, nope, I can't quite. I need something a bit sharper actually to to get that bit in. Oh, you got another pattern on that knife. Yeah, this is my um, cactus knife. This is newer, so this one's really sharp. If you do buy any of these knives, when you first get them, they are really sharp, so just be really careful. Um, they're good because they're sharp, like it's what I need, but sometimes students um, hurt themselves. We've had a few incidents in classes. You cut yourself a few times. Right? Especially, yeah, I cut myself all the time. This isn't a cut on my finger today. This is a burn. I took a pan out the oven and a tray out the oven and I forgot that I'd just taken it out of the oven and then I went to pick it up, forgetting it was red hot. I haven't done that for a while, actually. That's something I do quite often normally. Right, okay, let's give him a mouth. So we're going to kind of do the mouth over this bit. It's cute for him to look sad. Sorry to everybody that doesn't like them to look sad, but... It does make it a bit cuter. So pointy end of my Dresden tool. We're going to go from one side, kind of going upwards, back down here. You'll see it'll probably look different to my last one because every single time I do these, the whole twice I've done them, this is my third time, um, they will look a little bit different because you're doing it by hand. Things always look different by hand. And it's fine for the bottom lip to look like it's set slightly further back than the top one. Are you watching that instead of what I'm doing, Richard? No, it's still on you. Okay, that's all right then. So I'm just going to nudge this in. I said you could use a small ball in tool. That actually makes him look a bit cheerier when I do that. I'm just going to nudge it up a tiny bit there. Now, I know he's got lots of wrinkles and things on his face, but I don't want to put too many wrinkles on there because he'll lose his cuteness. So next we want a nose and I want my paintbrush. Oops. So, tiny, tiny bit of water up here. And then we want a very small, oops, maybe just grab a little bit more. Oops, just dropping everything. Did you just squash him then when you picked him up? No. Okay. So we want a tiny little oval, and we're just gonna push it on here, fairly high up, so that he's got like a bit of space here. Mm. 
this curves a little bit too much I'm just gonna alter that there a tiny bit and you can leave it like that or if you want you can add a couple of little nostrils I don't know if I can get in there to do nostrils sometimes his nose kind of slides up his face when I try and poke the nostrils in oops yeah it's going up his face let's see let's see if we can push that back down again oh I've put it on wonky now mm, it'll do that it'll be fine okay let's give him a little bit of color so I'm just going to use a big fluffy brush we use a bit of pink I think this one's the rose one uh, the rose one in the fractal and the rainbow dust are both nice either of those would do the job nicely so we're going to put a little bit in each ear do you think everything needs a bit of pink dust yeah there's not much that I do that doesn't have pink dust I'm not using my pens today though no you don't <laughs> I use them for most things as well but not today so can you see deeper or more pink up near this top bit and then less as we come down you can give him a little bit on his cheeks if you want let's see I don't want to put too much on his cheeks so just a just a small amount on here I don't know if I've even put enough on that you can really see it. Can you see it on his cheeks? Yeah, yeah, you can see it in the camera. We'll maybe give him some little forehead lines. Again, I'm just going to use this and just kind of press a little bit down the middle. Just running my finger over it to soften the line a bit. Oops, I've gone slightly off centre as well. And then we'll bring one here and here. I guess it just brings out like the top of the brow area a little bit more if I do that. If you don't like the lines just soften them a bit with your finger just looking back for a comment tasha says hello she's watching hi tasha so there's a lot of people watching <laughs> i'm looking forward to receiving my uh my macarons tasha i'm very excited about receiving my macarons tasha makes macarons and i've ordered some really nice flavored ones from her okay yeah face done I'm just trying to see can you see it on that one Richard I'm trying to show you all three faces to see if they look alike or if they look a little bit different they usually look kind of different Ooh, little aliens every time I do them it's not on purpose that they look different okay I should have really tried one with a smile this one looks smilier um even though I'm back on this camera now. I don't know which one I can, uh, I can do whichever camera. one which one the this angle here so. okay there yeah so you still got like a, it's just that I didn't arch it as much. And I think when I put the little dots in, I moved them slightly further up on his face. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do this one as a little stood up one, I think, like that one. So face done. I think the face is done. Yeah. I don't think I've missed any parts off the face. Then the body is, it's just kind of like a slight off-white. I've actually used white with a very, very tiny, tiny bit of brown. I had some brown modeling paste, so it's actually got a pinch of modeling paste in with it. But obviously you can put a tad of brown food coloring in. I'm going to want a similar amount of paste as to what I did in the head, which I think was about 35. Was it about 35? About 35, yes. So let's go with 35. Are any of you guys watching The Mandalorian? Did I, did I call it the right thing then? You did, yeah. I don't actually know um, when I moved it. Well, that's fair. We've watched quite a lot since we've got the uh, since Disney Plus. I bought, release. yeah, we've got the Disney thing. Um, so there's quite a lot of Disney stuff that way. <laughs> yeah. Who's seen it? Comment below if you have uh, if you have seen it. Did you say it's not actually meant to be Yoda, though? Or not? No, no. Just the same know. species? I don't think it is. Oh, okay. I'm assuming not, because it's different time zones. Is you it? tell me. You can tell me and Zoe a bit of Star Wars novices. I have no idea. Okay, so it was thirty-five-ish, thirty-six. Oops. So I'm gonna roll like a little cone with it first, and then we're gonna have a look. If I just squeeze the bottom of the cone down, I'll just hold it next to that first, so I can I see. It's a bit tall compared to that. Actually, no, it's not that tall compared to that one. Then usually what I'll do is I'll cut just a tiny bit off the bottom because it just helps me get a flatter, slightly flatter base. I'm just gonna, I've got paste stuck to my finger. Look, you can see where I haven't quite mixed the brown in properly on that one, it's a bit marbled, but it's okay. That's all on the inside, so you're not gonna see that. So what I'm gonna do is down the middle, we're gonna put two lines with the pointy edge of the Dresden tool. And then I'm gonna swap to a is it quilting tool or stitching tool it's called? It's got the little wheel on the end anyway. 
that makes little stitching lines. So we're just gonna run this down the front twice. And then we want him to look like it's creased. So you can either use like the rounded one, the handle, or if you want more obvious creases, use the ridge on the back of the pointy one. So you can see how it makes the top look quite creased. Okay, so we'll stand that up there. Then what we're gonna do is give him some little arms. I actually don't need very much paste for the arms, but I would say don't worry about weighing the arms. Um, Cause what we're gonna do is we'll hold them next to him and then have a look at what looks all right and what doesn't with them. So I know that I will have too much paste here. Just trying to roll out the creases and the cracks first. And then what I'm gonna do is a bit like the face at the beginning, we wanna roll one end a bit thinner. So we get this teardrop and then we're gonna roll the other end a bit thinner. And then we're gonna use each end for the arm. So I'll cut a bit like this first and then I'm gonna hold it next to the body so I can see the length. Now, actually it doesn't look like it's, like it's terribly long, but I think by the time I've got the sort of cuff on and the hand, it's gonna look quite a bit young, uh, longer. Also, it's a bit chunky, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna thin it a little bit. I'm gonna cut a bit more off and have another look again. Yeah, I think I'm happier with that kind of size. So I would say it comes about halfway down the body. Let's see if we can get one a similar size. Even when I hold them next to each other to cut them, they don't end up the same. I cut that one at a slant, it wasn't on purpose. Let's see. Yeah, I think they'll be okay. And it's up to you whether you want the arms straight down. So the one I did before, this one, its arms are straight down. That's probably the safest and easiest option. The one sat down, I tried to have them so they were kind of going upwards, but they kept wanting to drop down. He kind of holds his arm out to do like a bit of his magic stuff, doesn't he? Maybe I'll try one. His magic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Is what magic what stuff he does? does he do? He makes things fly. So I'm gonna push one like this, and then I'm gonna put the other one down by his side. Just keep an eye on that one that's out. If you're putting one out, if you wanna keep them both by the side, that's fine. Because they're quite small, I shouldn't need to sort of push anything in to hold it in place, but at first it might kind of slip down, so I need to keep an eye on it. I'm just gonna put a little bit of stitching along the top of each one, so two lines across the top of each one, each sleeve. If you want some creases, I'm gonna use the ridge on the back of the pointy tool for this one. It usually ends up kind of, when I press the creases in, it usually lengthens the arm a tiny bit. Okay, that's that bit done. So you see so far we've, we've got through quite a bit and there's not too much left to do. We've, we've got to add some hands and some cuffs and things. And then I think we'll probably do a bit of shading. Does his body look a bit big on this one? Should I make him a bit smaller? When the little collar thing goes on, he's gonna he's gonna change and he's gonna look a little bit different anyway. I think he looks okay. Okay. So I'm gonna, I think on the last one, I used about 10 grams in that collar. So let's see what we've got here. So the same color as the outfit. Nine and a bit is fine. It's so cold in here, I'm getting a runny nose. I'm sure it's freezing in our, in our cake studio, it's really cold. Okay, let's get rid of creases and cracks. Just move that to one side. Let's roll a little strip. I just want a strip that's kind of long enough that it will wrap around kind of this top bit like that. Oh, even if it's a bit longer, it can overlap, so it overlaps on the other ones. It might be that it's not quite long enough and that I can't have it overlapping. I'm gonna just press it lightly with my rolling pin just a little bit. So I'm just pressing just down. I'm not actually rolling backwards and forwards with that. Okay. It's got a bit of texture actually has his um, collar, I think. Or maybe it doesn't actually on the actual one. If I ask in the what, what were you saying? Doesn't matter. I was gonna say the video will go, the video will, this video will be available to watch on the Facebook page. Uh, later on today. Yeah, we usually put them on the YouTube channel as well, don't we? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so I'm just giving it a bit of texture. This is a, a grass piping nozzle, isn't it? This one. I've got oh, a smaller one somewhere. Piping nozzle two three three or two. Three. Is it not called grass nozzle though? I feel called. Oh, yeah. So there's like small ones or big ones. Big ones a bit quicker for me. So I'm kind of pushing it in and sort of twisting it a little bit just to give me a bit of a pattern. You can use all different things for texturing. Yeah, I think on the program it isn't actually textured, but when I found cute little images that people have made online or little cartoon images, he's almost got like a little fur collar, which he definitely doesn't have in the program. Where's well, a good question. Have you ever used another modeling paste which you find just as good as Saracino? Uh, this might be as well, because around the world, obviously, we, we use it because we can get a hold of it, but I guess in other areas, yeah, I'm just wrapping that around there, so it just kind of rests just on his shoulders and around there. Now the head, I will answer that in a second, I just want to tell you what I'm doing first, sorry. This will kind of get in the way of the head a bit, so you have to pull it fairly wide, so it'll cover the top part of his arms, and then his head will go on there. In fact, I'm just going to give him just a bit more paste in the middle for like a neck. I'm going to do it in the brown. I am going to answer your question in the middle, in, in the middle, in a minute. It's <laughs> a bit of water on there. Um, I'll be honest, I do really like this paste. There's, it doesn't mean that you can't use others and there are others that are, that are very good and usually it depends on what I'm making as to what paste I will use. But if I have to spend a long time working on something that's a complicated shape, then actually this is it's quite nice because it doesn't dry and set. Now you can add a stick, but you might actually find that with this, that it balances without a stick. So if you know that you can kind of leave it a little while this one's got a much taller body than that one. It makes him look too old. I'm just squash gonna it. Yeah, compress it down a little bit. I'm gonna squash that neck down a tiny bit. Um, yeah, we'll go in there. Hmm. Does he still look taller? He's a tiny bit taller still, but it's okay. Um, yeah, there's all different things you can use and they're all like, they're good for different things. So like the Renshaw's flower and modeling paste, I'm just gonna put a stick in just to make sure he's held up. Um, is really good so I usually do like my bride and grooms with that but what I find is unless you're used to modeling then it can dry fairly quick so once you've got used to using it it's it's brilliant because it sets rock hard but it sometimes sets quite quickly on the surface he doesn't have much shape to his little collar on this one I'm gonna see if I can pull it downwards a little bit here and here um, for me to be honest I find it quite difficult when I have to teach other places and they don't have it, depending on what I'm working on. Basic figures, I can use a lot of different modeling pastes. So the basic figure class is really easy to use. Um, like the Cake Duchess paste is nice. Um, we've just got a new one to try. Um, which other ones have we used? Sometimes I've used... Um, you use Renshaw's in the... Everything yeah, yeah, so yeah, when I used to teach at Renshaw's, it was always fine for all the stuff I did there as well. It's just really the more complicated stuff, to be honest, that this is better for. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's personal preference, I think. Because you're not very good at with... Um, Zoe's never been great at weighing out Tylos and I to fondant to make that. No, no, so um, when I taught in Taiwan, we used fondant with Tylos but we did something that was quite chunky so it wasn't a figure with like long thin slender legs and stuff but um the venue mixed all the tylos to the fondant for me because i can never work out how much to to put in and the vent um i think in taiwan they mainly use fondant with tylos so they were used to it so they just prepped it all ready for me i think it depends where you are as well so if you're in somewhere that's really hot you might find that actually the Saracino or Saracino doesn't work as well for you because the cocoa butter can melt when it's really hot. Mind you, when it's really hot, everything's a nightmare to work with. I think everybody's uh, always got a favorite brand as well there and everybody always likes one or another. Yeah, a lot of the time it's just what you're used to using. Um, we're gonna make him some little hands. It's probably a bit big. Two kind of little pea-sized pieces. Let's cut this in half. And I guess it's difficult because with paste, I can only buy so many to try so many. It's, it costs me a lot of money to try every brand. I have to ask the audience, um, obviously, because with Thursday, we'll do another Facebook Live again. Yep. Um, 
It may very well be more Star Wars themed, could it possibly be? Maybe. What kind of thing do you want from Star well, I Wars? I was going to say, see what sort of character. When's, when is May the 4th? Monday. Oh, is it? Okay. I think it's Monday. So, yeah, so. Just putting a bit more emphasis on the top of his ears. Facebook Live before May the 4th. Um, so, if people want to comment what they would like to see, if there's any particular Star Wars characters, something that can be done in a. Uh, can you still see what I'm doing, Richard? Okay, cool. Now. Just checking. I was just pulling his ears down a little bit because then he looks different to the other ones. Okay, these might be. Uh, that one might be alright. This one just looks a tiny bit big. They're only going to peek out a tiny bit, I think, out the bottom. Anyway, we're keeping them very basic. But what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of water at the bottom of each sleeve. I think as I've compressed him down, these sleeves now look um, longer. In fact, I'm going to just cut. A tiny bit off the end no. of each sleeve. I know they look tiny, but I don't want him to have long arms. It's a bit of water just under there. Let's see. I will do a bit more work to them than just leaving them like that. So what I'm going to do is pinch the end slightly. And I'm just going to use, can you see the pointy end? You see both the Dresden tool and the stitching wheel both have that pointy end, so you could use either for this, it's fine. So we're just going to push in in two places. So it's not a very detailed one, so I'm not going to worry about putting these little fingernails and stuff on that he does have. Okay, so we get that kind of shape. Let's see if it looks a bit big or not. That looks fairly big. And also his sleeves want to look like the covering part of his hand, so I'm going to cut the top of his hand off. And we're just going to stick those little fingers coming out from the bottom of the sleeve. Do the same on this one. So we're going to press in two places like that. I'll pinch it a little bit. And let's cut a little bit off the top. So we've just got the fingers poking out. Let's see if we can get that on there. And he does actually have little cuffs across the bottom. In fact, let's give him the little sleeve bits, the turn ups on his sleeves. So I'm not going to want too much on there. I'm going to put a bit of water on the bottom. Can you still see this if I'm doing this, Richard? Might even dust some colour on actually at the end yeah. for this. I can move it. You don't have to move. I can move this so you can yeah, see no, it. If you fine, so let's roll this nice and thin for the sleeves. Again, let's just give it a light little press down a little bit. If I do them too wide, they're just going to cover the whole of the arm which I don't want. We'll just give it a little bit of texture so it matches with his collar. It's a bit soft with me just having rolled it out. So if you've done this and it feels soft, just give it a minute to firm up before you stick it on. But I can do that with this paste. If you're using a paste that dries quite quickly, if you give this a minute before you stick it on, you might find that it cracks when you try sticking it on. Okay, so let's see if we can lift him up. I'm gonna start on the inside here. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom of that sleeve. Oops. No, no camera. <laughs> what? Can you not see it? Yeah, no, I can do it. And I'm going to cut it off where it just meets the back. I should have really... A craft knife is probably easier for these smaller bits. There we go. Let's do the same on the other one. So at the front, wrapping it round. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Just be careful when you pick it up that you're not squashing it somewhere else. Okay, you can't actually see my little crease lines, can you, that I put in there because his sleeves are so chunky. Does he still look baby-like or have I made him a bit tall? He looks, he looks cute. I mean, when you're doing it, have a bit of a play around because I think his head is still smaller than his body on the actual program, but if you're making them a bit cartoony, then actually a really big head is what's going to make it look a bit more baby-like. Let's see, let's line him up. He's definitely a bit bigger than the... Oh, he's a tiny bit bigger than the other one. It's not by much. There you go, facing that way. This one must be bigger because he's sat down and he's almost... What? He's almost the same height as the other ones. So, because I've just made that one, I probably don't want to dust colour on him just yet. So let's move him to one side a second. So why won't you dust him straight away? Well, just because when, you know, when I've brushed water on to stick parts together, if bits are wet, um, the dust gets stuck in it and it can look a bit untidy where it kind of smears. I'm just going to put away my extra paste that I'm not using. I'm just going to move these weighing scales to one side. Okay. 
and of course you don't have to add dust if you don't want to dust them you can leave them at this stage because i think they actually look all right as they are i'm just going to use some sort of paper this is a hand towel paper towel but kitchen roll or something will do the job just so i don't get dust everywhere because dust is a bit of a pain to get off your mats um, a lot of you have bought the petal palette ones you can use them that's absolutely fine the only reason I, I don't need pink the only reason i haven't got my petal palette one back out is because we've sold out of them in the shop and a lot of people are asking so i thought if i use it now people <laughs> might get frustrated that they can't actually buy it from us at the moment let's try this one it's probably a bit bright as it on its own this is the squirrel brown you could in fact i could even mix it with a few different brands um or even with a bit of white you can use white to change the color or you can use cornflower so this is just cornflower in here um let's see let me find another brush i was going to use this one actually but it might be a bit too chunky for what i need that one i could have used for the years so i want a brush that's not too fat so i can mix the color in with the cornflower just to lighten it a tiny bit okay so I just dab the extra out and then what I want to do is just brush over any bits that I want to be a little bit deeper in color so kind of just around the edges of this kind of I guess on the top edge of it because maybe his face and chin would be shadowing this bit here I guess the underneath bit would be quite dark, wouldn't it? Even just around the edges of things. Just stops it looking as flat colour-wise if you get some dust on there. I meant to find a colour green so that I could dust a bit of green on his face, but I've forgotten. Forgot to go get a green out. So we're just mixing it with a bit more dust. Um, kind of brushing it into... Can you see those little crease marks that we put in? Let's catch a little bit under each sleeve. Somebody said, can they add gel colourings to Saraceno to colour it? Yeah, that's what these are. Yep. Oh, you might have missed the beginning. So this is peppermint gel colour with white Saraceno. So yes, yeah. you can. You can add yeah. gel colours. So you can, you can mix any. You can mix powder colours, gel colours, any kind of food colouring. Somebody said Chewbacca would be a good uh, good idea for the next one. Oh, You've yeah. not done Chewbacca. No. Somebody's asked for Stormtrooper helmets. We've actually got one. We actually there. do have one, yeah, on YouTube. It's quite an old one, that one. Yeah. It's a, it was a white one, wasn't it, that we did, yeah? The white Stormtrooper helmet yeah. cake. Jar Jar Binks, Jabba the Hutt. Oh, some good ones. So I'm just keeping going on the back as well. His head's a bit flat at the back, but... I actually don't mind. I know a lot of people, when they're actually making them, they get very obsessed about that the back of the head has to be perfectly round. For me, it's not an issue if it's a little bit flat. Um, I've never had a customer ever say, oh, the head's too flat at the back. It's, you know, it's cartoony. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly round. And on actual figures, you can round them back off with a bit of hair. This guy doesn't really have much hair. He does have some actually, but I think if I try putting little fluffy bits of hair on there, I'm possibly going to ruin him. So let's see we're, the difference. We're, we're only taking pictures from front on anyway. <laughs> so it's not a big difference, is it? It's just yeah, it just have. a tiny bit more colour. He actually has a tiny bit brown in his ears as well, but let's see what it looks like if we can just put a tiny bit. Not much. I'm just putting a little bit kind of mixed in with where that pink is. This is where I don't actually have a picture of him. What he looks like on the program to hand. I'm just sticking colour on everywhere now. That he probably doesn't have any kind of colour. Actually, a, a slightly deeper green would have been good for me to dust. Oh, I've got a bit much there. Got some green dust. To dust on him. No, no, it's all right. I'm going with this now. Yeah, put a bit much there. Usually, if I put a bit much on, I can just rub a bit of cornflour on and it just eases the colour off a tiny bit. Usually, not always. This is where actually the palette is good because it wouldn't give me too much dust at a time for if I wanted to darken it, but I don't want to do too much on his face. Let's see. Can you see that there is stuff on the face or can you not really tell? Yeah, yeah you can do. Can you? A little bit. Richard sometimes just agrees with me because he thinks it's the easiest option. 
than disagreeing with me. I'm not saying anything. Okay, so there they are. But you can have a play around with them in different positions and things. I'm just going to put the lid back on this because I'll knock this one off and over. I always knock them over when the, the lids are off. And it's a new one, that one, so there's quite a lot in it. Okay, so I'm going to move this to one side. But yeah, that's it. That's, that's today's tutorial finish. Let me just put them all somewhere where you guys can see them. This is where Richard's going to tell me that you can't see where I'm putting them. Can, do. can you see them there? Yeah, I'm doing it. I can't work out at all in the screen where he wants me there to go, put them. Right. Wait, he's, he's overshadowing another one. Never mind. As long as you guys can see what I've made. Um, if you do have a go at making them, um, feel free to send me pictures or tag me in your posts. It's nice to see them. I don't always see stuff as much on Facebook as I do on Instagram. I see a lot more stuff if people put it in their Instagram stories and then tag me in the Instagram story. Also means I can share that story easily for you onto my stories as well.